Good morning. Welcome to our Holidaysburg Church of the Brethren virtual Sunday morning worship service. Thank you for joining us. Our worship together is an opportunity to strengthen our faith in the resurrected Christ. In the church year, this is the third Sunday of Easter. The celebration of the resurrection continues. Today, we will explore Luke's account of Jesus' post-resurrection appearance to the disbelieving and wondering disciples. In this story, Jesus sits down to a satisfying fish dinner, assuring the disciples that he lives. He takes this opportunity to instruct them and us to proclaim the presence and the power of God. To equip us for this task, Jesus commands us to wait until we are clothed with power from on high. I have a few announcements. You will find our prayer concerned list in your Sunday morning email blast. And please continue to keep us updated and informed of prayer concerns or joys by calling Daisy at the church office. Our mission and evangelism team will be hosting our community yard sale on Saturday, June 12th from 8 a.m. until 1 o'clock p.m. in our church parking lot. If you would like to rent a space to sell your own items, please contact Tom Neely by May 1st. If you would like to donate gently used items for the church to sell, you may drop them off at the church parking lot on Friday, June 11th. If you need items to be picked up, you may contact Tom Neely. Our proceeds from the day will be evenly divided between Women's Fellowship, National Youth Conference Fund, and our Accessibility Fund. Let us worship and celebrate our faith in Christ, the one who makes himself known to us.
Christ is risen and greets us with peace. The peace of Christ is among us indeed. We are witnesses of God's glory and steadfast love. The transforming love of Christ is among us indeed. Come, let us worship. Please pray with me. God of love and light, we come as witnesses of your glory and faithfulness, amazed to discover your transformative love. God, we desire for you to abide within us and for your grace to be revealed anew daily. Be with us and awaken within us your call to love one another in the way it was made real through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Ever-present God, forgive us when we stand in disbelief and comfort us when our fears outweigh your peace. God, forgive us when we become too busy to pray. Help us when we fail to see our neighbors in need. Abiding God, forgive us when we are overwhelmed with bad news and shut down completely. In these times, remind us that we are called to be. Your love lived, your faithful witnesses, and your humble servants. Help us to wake up the work of love and to your renewing strength each day, we pray. Amen. O oh God, hear our prayers of repentance and forgiveness and awaken us from doubt, disbelief, and distress by transforming us into your resurrection joy. God, we desire for your loving spirit to be among us, to comfort us in our fears, and to renew our faith. Amen. As Jesus gave himself fully for us and then appeared to the disciples bringing peace, so let us now bring wholeness and healing to others through our tithes and gifts. Lord God, we offer to you only a portion of what you have given us. All that we have is from your creative hand. All that we can give away, we do through Jesus' love. All our renewal comes from the Holy Spirit's wisdom. 
Deal graciously with these gifts so that others may have joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join your hearts with mine as we pray. Almighty God, the light of your love shines upon us. We praise you and we thank you for making us children of God, not through our own power, but your power from on high. We turn to you, enable us to find your peace, courage, and purpose in our lives. Help us to see you face to face. Reveal your radical, surprising love. Be our joy. Open our minds to understand. Come to us through your holy word. Let us hear what you are saying. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, make us your witnesses to the great news of Christ's resurrection. May our words and our deeds proclaim our faith in you. As a family of faith, lead us and guide us to be your witnesses in this community. Enable us to walk boldly. Enable us to understand your call to be witnesses in our world, witnesses of repentance, and Christ's forgiveness of the power of the resurrection. Lord, we pray for the needs of others, for refugees, all who are displaced, for rescue workers, for medical teams, for weary persons, for those who struggle with addiction, for those that feel burdened with grief, and regret, for those who are homeless, for those who seek employment, for those who have asked us for our prayers. We pray for those on our prayer list. Open their hearts and their minds to the healing, wisdom, and faith given in your word. Bring them your peace and your strength. Give wholeness according to your grace and mercy. We trust you, O oh God. Lead us and guide us to nurture our relationship with you through Christ, our risen Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 49. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He had said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is still the Easter season in the church year. After Jesus' resurrection, he walked the earth for 40 days. So today, we step into another of Jesus' appearances to his disciples after his resurrection. We find the disciples still getting over the initial shock of the very idea that Jesus was risen. There is a sense of urgency in today's gospel. As Jesus tells the disciples, you're going to be my witnesses to all nations. Repentance and forgiveness will be preached in my name. It is crystal clear. Our mission as people of faith we are to be witnesses for Christ. Through our life, through our words, through our actions, we share the good news of his resurrection so that they might know Jesus Christ. But can we really do that if we don't know Jesus Christ ourselves? Isn't it interesting in our scripture today, we have this note of urgency in being witnesses. And yet, right alongside it is a no hurry, just wait attitude. Jesus says, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, the Holy Spirit. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. No rush. Just hang on a while. Wait. Just wait. So what's the lesson here? Let me ask you, is God asking you to wait right now? Is there some aspect of your life, some prayer you've been praying, some decision you've been struggling with, and heaven seems to have turned a deaf ear? It could be that God's answer to you is wait, just wait. One of the most difficult things that we can do in life is wait, just wait. We are so conditioned to be in control, so conditioned to be independent, so conditioned to be so self-made and so self-determined, so conditioned to do something, that idea of waiting is so contrary to our very nature. It takes faith to just wait. It takes faith to relinquish total control to God. It takes faith to surrender a situation or a dilemma 
into the loving hands of God. Where and what situations have you been asked by God to wait? Just wait. In a book called Experiencing God, Knowing and Doing the Will of God by Henry Blackaby and Claude Haw, the authors make some very startling statements. Among them is this one. God is more interested in a love relationship with you than he is in what you can do for him. God is more interested in a love relationship with you than he is in what you can do for him. As for waiting, they go on to say, if you do not have clear instructions from God in a matter, pray and wait. Learn patience. Depend on God's timing. God's timing is always right and best. Don't get in a hurry. God may be withholding an answer or directions to cause you to seek him more intently. Don't try to skip over the relationship to get on with the doing. God is more interested in a love relationship with you than he is in what you can do for him. So often, we ask and we beg and we plead for God to do something for us or on our behalf. I wonder if God says, now, who are you? Do I really know you? You don't make any special efforts to get to know me and spend time with me. The only time you talk to me is when you want or need something. Blackaby and King are 100% correct. We try to skip over the relationship with God in order to get on with the doing. God wants a relationship with us more than anything else. That may be why he is asking you to wait right now. Are you trying to skip over your relationship with God? Do you just want to get on with the doing? Maybe God is saying, wait. I want you to spend this time deepening our love relationship. So often though, we want what we want. When we want it, we want something done now, and if God doesn't act, we take things into our own hands. And often the situation ends up worse than if we had just waited. Again, if you are praying for something and no clear answer seems to be on the horizon, resist the urge to do something. God may be asking you to wait, just wait. And while you are waiting, spend that time deepening your relationship with him. In our scripture for this morning, you can see this entire scenario being lived out. Faced with the urgent earth-changing task of witnessing to the world about Jesus Christ, the resurrected Savior, Jesus appears to the disciples and says, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Wait. Just wait. Urgency and waiting aren't really as opposed to one another as they would first seem. The biggest decisions, the grandest undertaking needs to be bathed in a flood of prayer. And that 
takes time. In our irresistible urge to do, when we go off on our own power and our own strength, on our own spirit, we are destined for failure. Jesus knew that as the stage was being set for the spread of the church across the world. When it comes to witnessing about the presence and the power of Christ, just as it is with every other part of our life, when we attempt to accomplish things without the aid of the Lord's wisdom and guidance and spirit, chances are very good that we will mess things up. Jesus knows that about us. Just as he knew it about the disciples after the resurrection, he know, knew that even with all of the enthusiasm and good intentions, they were still human. He knew that they still needed to grow in faith and spiritual maturity in order to be prepared for the great task ahead of them. And so he tells them, wait, just wait. Again, is that what our Lord is telling you today? In her book, Gospel Medicine, Barbara Brown Taylor writes, our waiting is not nothing. It is something, a very big something, because people tend to be shaped by whatever it is they are waiting for. What are you waiting for? Look at your life today. Look at the silences in your life. Look at the seemingly unanswered prayer in your life. Maybe God really is answering them, but in a different way than what you would ever imagine or expect. If there are such areas in your life, use these as opportunities to focus on deepening your relationship with the Lord. When God says wait, he may be saying, I want a real relationship with you. Instead of doing, just wait. Wait and get to know the Lord more intently and intimately. That is the purpose of waiting. May it be so.
let us go forth rich in spirit, knowing God has a plan for our lives. Let us go forth as witnesses to God's hope of justice, peace, grace, and love. Let us go forth believing fully that Christ is with us, enfolding us with his spirit and his love, now and always. Amen. Thank you.